Hey, I am Devendra Veliketa from SharePointJourney.com. In this video, you will learn what is SharePoint Framework and how to set up the development environment for SharePoint Framework and what are the different tools that you need to work with. So some of the tools you can just install it and forget about it and some of the tools that you need to learn more about as a new uh, development framework that was introduced by Microsoft. So let's jump in and learn about SharePoint Framework. So what we are going to do in the first session is we are going to set up the development environment uh, so that we have everything ready to develop solutions for SharePoint Framework. So that we can use the SharePoint Framework as one of the options to develop our travel request application. So like I said, this SharePoint Framework uh, will be supported in both classic sites and modern sites. Okay, uh, when it comes to SharePoint Online, you have classic team sites and modern team sites. So it's going to be supported in both those sites. That's the intention of developing the SharePoint framework. And what are the solutions that you're going to develop will be in the current user context. So that means, let's say, if I have permissions to one particular list, uh, let's say I have only the read permissions to that list, then I can only get the data, but I can't perform the other operations. So that's one of the things that you need to note down when you are trying to develop a solution using SharePoint Framework. So that's why when the SharePoint Framework is introduced, whatever the previous model that was developed, which is add-in model, will not go away. Okay, this will still stay. Okay, uh, because there are a lot of other scenarios that you still need the add-in model where you will be developing solutions because solutions that you're going to develop using the SharePoint framework will use the current user context. So which means uh, like in your form solution, you can't just use run with elevator privileges and those kind of options. That is not there. Okay, that is one thing you need to aware about SharePoint framework. Then um, the responsive one. So by default, all the sites are responsive. Um, or even when you develop any web part, so that will be responsive as well using SharePoint Framework. So that means you don't want to put additional effort uh, to make that particular custom solution to be responsive. So when we develop uh, our first solution using SharePoint Framework, you will see how that behaves and what are the things that goes behind. Okay. Well, then everything would be client-side development. So that's why uh, you need to explore and learn and uh, try to become as much as knowledgeable or hands-on on client-side development. So I would say start if you're complete a server side, a developer guy. So it's time to learn about client-side development. That's where Microsoft is going towards and the SharePoint online development as well. So. I would say start learn JavaScript and jQuery, okay, uh, as well as Angular. Still, though, Angular is not yet supported with SharePoint framework, but it will be coming very soon. So, let's say if you're good at React, uh, you could use React. So, try to learn these frameworks or the client side technologies so that you will be able to build solutions. Uh, which supports SharePoint Online. Okay, so you need to be good at client side development uh, if you want it to be a good SharePoint developer, which is very, very important. Then, uh, using SharePoint framework, you can get the data, you can access the data, you can perform all the CRUD operations that you would like to perform. So, that means uh, I can read the data from SharePoint. I can write the data into SharePoint, I can delete, I can update. So all these operations can be performed uh, using SharePoint framework solutions. Okay. And the last one is uh, class cross-platform tools. That means there would be different set of tools that you will be using. These tools will be used across the community. So it's not only the SharePoint developers who will be using these tools. So which means uh, there would be a lot of updates, a lot of feedback, okay? These are open source tools. Uh, you can make uh, 
customizations and you can consume those uh, developments that are being done by the other developers and all those things. So it's like now uh, Microsoft is making open source for everything and SharePoint development is no exception, right? So you have options to access all those tools and work with those tools. So if you are new to those tools, don't worry, you will learn those tools and you will use it. Okay, so that's where when I talk about tools, we have different set of tools that we will be going through each one of them. And I'm gonna explain about what each tool does and on which tool you have to focus and which tool you just install and forget it. For example, Visual Studio, right? Uh, you never try to learn about Visual Studio in detail. Most of the times we just install it and try to use while developing the SharePoint solutions. In the same way, there are a lot of tools here that we are going to install it and just use it. We don't have to get into the deep uh, to learn or build solutions using SharePoint framework. Okay. So the first one that comes is node.js. So uh, this is the first tool. Then the next one is node package manager. Uh, this is a node package manager for the JavaScript. I'm going to go through each one of the tool in detail. This is the second one that you need to aware of. Next one is Gulp. So Gulp is basically for automating some of the tasks that you will be doing. Then the Yeoman. A Yeoman is, uh, you can compare the Yeoman with uh, Visual Studio. So when you go and do file new project and create a project, by default, it will generate set of files, right? Uh, so you don't have to create everything from the scratch. Uh, this is the one that does, uh, in case of SharePoint framework development, where uh, it gives us the scaffolding, uh, where we get a default structure. On top of it, we are going to make changes and build solutions. So it's basically speed up the development, how, or how we use with Visual Studio development. Then the last one is uh, VS Code, uh, which is a Visual Studio Code. This is a shortcut. Uh, this is a lightweight tool, so you don't have to use Visual Studio, but if you would like to use Visual Studio, you can go ahead and use it. I'm gonna talk about one of the extensions that community has built to develop SharePoint framework web parts, but if you don't want to install Visual Studio, that's still fine. You can just go ahead and use uh, Visual Studio code and build solutions using SharePoint framework. Okay. Okay, th this is what, uh, okay, let's talk about each one of them, okay, before we get into uh, preparing the development environment. When you go to the uh, Node.js site, so this is what it shows. Uh, you will have LTS option and you have the current option. So try to download the LTS version, okay, so that it's more stabilized. But if you look at the statement that they say, uh, they say that Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built in on Chrome engine. So it's not that you're gonna run uh, the Node.js on just the browser. It's basically, you can run it from anywhere. So you can run on the server side as well. And also, Node.js will come up with an NPM. Okay, Node Package Manager, which is actually an ecosystem of open source libraries in the world. So that means you have a lot of open source libraries, right? NPM is Node Package Manager for JavaScript. So you have a lot of libraries like, uh, I can say you have jQuery, you have Angular, you have Knockout, right? And uh, you have React. So there are many other libraries. So what you can do is you can use this NPM, uh, Node Package Manager, and get those libraries, the latest ones that will be used within your solution. Well, that's the main purpose of uh, NPM. So it's a central location from where you can download all those files or libraries that you need. Okay, so automatically by default, when you install Node.js, 
you're going to get uh, NPM. So what I'm going to do here, I just open my browser and uh, go to the Node.js site. Oops. Okay, so when you just search for Node.js, I'm gonna get the first one, Node.js.org. This is the site that we are interested in. And uh, so go ahead and download the recommended one, which is LTS. So as of now, I am doing the uh, installation and everything in my local machine, uh, which is a Windows 8. So you, you, can, you can do this in your local itself, or you can create a VM in Azure, or if, if you have Windows 10, you can use that machine as well, okay? So once, you, uh, once it got downloaded, then we can go ahead and uh, install this particular tool. Yeah, while this is getting downloaded, I'm gonna go and uh, uh, explain about the next one. So the NPM, which is a package manager for JavaScript. Uh, if you see all the frameworks behind the scenes, they use the JavaScript, right? Uh, whether you talk about jQuery, jQuery is like simplifying of your JavaScript methods so that you can call those methods and reuse those things. Same with Angular and other frameworks behind the scenes, everything was done using JavaScript. So if I go here and click on this NPM, it's gonna open the NPM site. Okay, so where it says we can build amazing things using NPM. Okay. So, but when I scroll down, so you can see a lot of packages that you could install, starting from the grant, Cordova, uh, Bower, a lot of other things that you would get, the latest packages, and uh, start using them within your solution. So basically, if you look at one of these things, or if you go to the documentation part, you will see how this can be used. Okay, uh, it explains uh, what is NPM and everything. I would suggest you can Install Node.js and forget about Node.js. You don't have to learn about Node.js, but I would recommend learn uh, NPM, okay? So please learn about uh, NPM because you are gonna use some of these very commonly while working with shape and framework development, okay? So it has a lot of information, um, what this does, what why you need to, how you're gonna install it, and how the packages works, okay? So just go through this documentation um, which is required. For example, there are commands, like let's go to the install. This is the common one that you're gonna use whenever you wanted to install NPM. So this one explains about different options uh, that you could use uh, when you want to install. And one of them you see that um, hyphen G. Okay, which means whenever you do npm install and if you specify iPhone G, it will install all, all these dependencies or the files globally. That means it is applicable for all the solutions that you're gonna develop. But most of the times you don't do that. You will only install, uh, do npm install for a specific uh, project. And that will be always depends on this package.json. So if you don't know about package.json, uh, you need to learn about this and see what are the things that can be done within this particular package.json. So package.json will have version against each one of them. Okay, what are the things that will be installed when you run the NPM? So I would suggest go through this uh, package.json and uh, see what are the things that it can consist of. So it can consist of dependencies, okay? And it has the tilt symbol, uh, it has um, uh, 
the cap symbol or the caret symbol so what what is the importance of those things so you should know because we will be seeing a similar kind of our the package.json file when we develop shape and framework solutions so uh, i would encourage you to go through these things okay but for now uh, this is being downloaded so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and install the node js my local machine so i'm going to click next here and i'm going to accept the agreement and i'm going to leave all these options and i'm going to go ahead and install it and once this node dot js got installed you will also get a console that is specific to node dot js so let it get installed i'll show you how that console look like okay so the next one is um, gulp this is basically to automate the different tasks that you are going to perform when i say tasks when you build the solution there would be series of tasks that need to be done with the help of gulp so this is again uh, if you want to read or learn more about this you can go to the gulpjs.com where you could uh, learn more about this so let me just say yes here so that this will keep on installing it so i'll go to uh, gulpjs.com which explains uh, what this gulp does okay and i suggest you to learn about uh, this gulp as well okay because you will be using some of the common uh, things that you're going to uh, do this uh, so just just go through and uh, <coughs> learn about gulp as well okay okay this third one and yeah a little bit more information about the gulp um, this is a stream building system where uh, we are going to specify let's say let's say you have multiple files okay in your application obviously when you are developing enterprise application you will have multiple javascript files like file1.js then file2.js you will have file 3.js and so on now using gulp what you can do is you can concatenate all those files and uh, <laughs> make it as a single file so that that you could reference in your solution which will improve the performance of your application so those kind of things can be done using gulp you can concatenate you can minify those javascript files those things can be done but you will see also in sharepoint framework development how those things will be used and uh, yeah like i said this makes things pretty easier uh, so that you can manage all those tasks to develop solutions and the last one is uh, and the fourth one in fact yeoman uh, this is for the scaffolding of your solutions that you are going to build Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna install each one of them and show you. Okay, it seems like now we have Node.js is ready, but how I can check whether it is ready? So I can go to the Node here, and I can see I have a command prompt, and I have uh, Node.js is installed. So when I click on this, I can see uh, Node.js being installed, and I can also check what is the version of the Node that is being deployed. Are installed. Okay, so I can say npm uh, dash dash v, which will show the version of npm that is installed. Now, using this npm, uh, we said it's a node package manager, and uh, we can install the gulp as well as yoma. So I'll go ahead and install these two things. So, if I wanted to install anything using npm, we'll say uh, npm, then install. Okay. So, if I wanted to install globally, I'll say hyphen g. Then, if I wanted to install gulp, 
I'll say gulp. Now what this is going to do is, it is going to install or download the files that are required for the gulp and it's going to install those things in my machine. Okay, and uh, you can see that uh, these are making changes to my folder. C users Devendra, so I can go ahead and check what are those things looks like as well. Once uh, this is got installed, we can go ahead and install the Yoma as well. Okay, so now if you see this success message, that means um, the Gulf got installed successfully. So I'm going to install Yoma now. So I'll say npm install hyphen g and yo so yo is for the yeoman so now this is being uh, installed now uh, let's let's go to the yeoman site okay while this is being installed and see what we have there so for yeoman uh, this is what the sign yeoman dot io and uh, we can see the documentation here as well. Uh, it explains what is the Yeoman and what are the things that you could do using Yeoman. Okay, so you have the Gulp and Grant combination, or you can have the Package Manager as well to install these things. Okay, so yeah, this is the command that we are trying to do or installing using npm. So npm is the key thing. Uh, I would focus on learning. Or spending time on npm to understand all these pretty greedy things so here uh, i can see that this is also being installed right and uh, you have uh, different things that are being compared and all those things so once everything got installed okay there is another thing if you are not comfortable with this node.js command prompt you can still um, open this using windows powershell as well okay so let me change some of these properties i'm going to increase the font okay so now it's more readable so i can in fact check all those things here also right uh, it works in the similar way so now given that uh, we have installed the yeoman vm install G, then I'll say Microsoft and generator from SharePoint. So let's try to install uh, the human generator itself for SharePoint. So once we have this, um, then we, we will be able to work on the development of <coughs> web parts or the solutions using SharePoint framework. So while this is being uh, installed, so we will look at the other tools that we need. So this is the other one, uh, Visual Studio Code. This is a free tool, a tool where we could just download it and install it in your local machine. So let's go ahead and search for Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna just download the Visual Studio Code. I'm using Windows. Uh, So I'll go here and uh, install Visual Studio Code. This is again the installation is uh, pretty much straightforward. Um, nothing fancy here. So you click next, 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 then it's going to install the Visual Studio Code uh, in your mission. And this is the main tool that we are going to use uh, for the developer or for the developing solutions using SharePoint Framework. All right, so we have uh, Visual Studio Code got installed. It has a lot of options like uh, you can go ahead and create a folder or open the existing folder. Um, you, you have a debug option. So you, have, you can download the extensions. And uh, yeah, the more we work with Visual Studio Code, the uh, yeah, better you will be at. Once so, the yeah. human has been installed for SharePoint, just go ahead and type yo there then it will give you option to run the microsoft sharepoint generator then you can just go ahead and run it or you can just update it whenever you require 
okay so that's what uh, so far we have done installation of all the tools and everything which is starting from node.js then which, which will give um, inbuilt npm where you could use for installing different frameworks then we have installed gulp then we have installed human then finally we have installed visual studio code as well for developing the SharePoint framework solutions thanks for watching this video for more videos please visit www.sharepointjourney.school